I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today's topic will be uh, induction, mathematical induction. Induction is a method you can use to prove certain formulas. And uh, let me start from a very simple problem and uh, how this particular method is applied to this. Um, there is a legend, legend about um, German mathematician uh, Carl Friedrich Haus. Um, he, uh, when he was a child, uh, apparently teacher asked the class where he was uh, to add numbers from 1 to 100. Well, maybe the teacher wanted uh, students to keep quiet for a while, so it would take them a while to add all these numbers. Um, and uh, quite suddenly, the teacher saw that uh, young Carl um, raises his hand and uh, basically gives the right answer. Um, apparently what uh, he did was he noticed that if you will take this sequence of numbers and write it backwards, 100, 99, 98, plus 1, well basically you have exactly the same um, sum of numbers. Um, and uh, if you add them all together, it will be double the sum which was originally uh, supposed to be calculated. But if you instead um, add it vertically using these pairs first, um, he noticed that the sum of these is 1 over 1, the sum of these will be 1 over 1, 3 and 98 is 1 over 1, etc. And the last one will be 1 over 1. And how many times 101 participates in this sum? Well, obviously, 100 times. Well, using the multiplication, the total sum will be 10,100. But then again, this is a double of the original sum. So the what we are looking for is half of this number, which is 5,050. And that's the answer Kaus did. Um, well, that's the right answer. Now let's try to generalize it a little bit. Instead of adding numbers from 1 to 100, um, we will use um, uh, the same methodology young Carl House was, was using and let's try to add numbers from 1 to any arbitrary number n. Well, we'll do exactly the same thing Carl did. He was a genius, by the way. Um, let's write them backwards. And again, some of all these numbers is double the sum which we are looking for, um, but instead of summing it horizontally, we will sum uh, in this direction, vertically, and then multiply, obviously. And as you understand, the sum of these is n plus 1. Sum of 2 and n minus 1 is, again, n plus 1, etc. And sum of these two is also n plus 1. Exactly the same logic, n plus 1 participates n times. So the total will be n times n plus 1. And since this is double of the whole sum which we are looking for, the real answer is this. This is the formula. Okay. Fine, let's write it down again.
1 plus 2 plus etc. plus n equals. This is a nice formula. So whenever we want to calculate sum of numbers from 1 to 1,000, let's say, we can use the formula. It's 1,000 times 1,001 divided by 2, whatever it is. Very easy to calculate. Great. Now, can we really use this formula for any n? Well, we didn't prove it for any n. We kind of guessed that this will be uh, exactly the sum. We basically noticed that there is a vertical sum of n plus 1 in each pair of uh, vertical numbers, uh, but then it's really a guess that it will be exactly the same for all these intermediate members as well. And we cannot obviously check uh, that this particular vertical sum will be equal to n plus 1 um, for each number. Um, we just did it for a couple of numbers in the beginning and a couple of numbers at the end, and that's it. So, mathematically speaking, this is not a rigorous proof. And the method of mathematical induction is exactly this rigorous proof. This is the method we can prove the formula is really um, valid for any n. Now, here is the method how it's supposed to be used uh, uh, in, in, in a rigorous sense, so to speak. This method contains actually three steps. Step number one, check for n equals to 1. So we have to check this formula for some initial number. Usually it's uh, number 1, for instance. Well, for number 1, the sum on the left will be from 1 to 1, which is 1. And the number on the right will be 1 times 1 plus 1, 2, divided by 2, also 1. So 1 equals 1, formula checked. Okay, we definitely know that this formula is valid for certain initial number. In this case, it's number one. Number two, assume, and this is a very important word, assume that the formula is valid for some number n equals to k, where k is any number, whatever we want. So let's assume, let's assume for a second that one plus two plus etc plus k equals to k, the k plus one divided by 2. Now, this is an assumption. We are not saying this is true. We are assuming that this is true. And based on this assumption, number 3 is let's prove it for n equals k plus 1. So, let's assume that the formula is true for n equals k, and using this, let's prove that the formula is true for n equals k plus 1. So, let's assume that if we will add k numbers from 1 to k together, we will get this number. Now, let's add k plus 1 numbers. What happens in this case? Well, let's calculate now. If you take numbers from 1 to k plus 1, it will be 1 plus 2 plus etc. plus k plus k plus 1. This is the sum which we are trying to prove is equal to the same formula but, but with n is equal to k plus 1. Okay, let's do it. Now, using our assumption that the formula is true for n equals k, 
instead of this sum from 1 to k, we can write k times k plus 1 divided by 2. So this is our expression now. Okay? This is exactly where we're using this assumption. Now, let's just um, change it a little bit. It's k, k plus 1, 2, two plus uh, 2, k plus 1, divided by 2. So instead of k plus 1, I multiply and divide it by 2. So we'll have a common denominator. So k plus 1 can be factored out. k plus 2 remains. Divided by 2. Okay. So using, again, using our assumption that's extremely important, we have come up that this particular sum from 1 to k plus 1 is equal to this. Now, let's think again what we are trying to prove. We're trying to prove that n plus 1 plus 2 plus etc. plus n equals to n, n times n plus 1 divided by 2. We're trying to prove that this formula is valid for any n. We can assume that for n equals k, uh, k it's true. Now, how, how does this formula look for n equals to k plus 1. Well, on the left it will be 1 plus 2, etc. plus k plus 1, which is this. On the right, if n is equal to k plus 1, n is equal to k plus 1. n plus 1 is obviously k plus 2 now. So, n divided by 2. So, this formula with n equals to k plus 1 is exactly what we have just received. Sum from 1 to k plus 1 on the left, and k plus 1 times k plus 2 divided by 2 on the right. So, again, what we have done, we have proved, we have proved that the formula is true for n is equal to k plus 1, assuming that the formula is true for n equals k. Where the assumption was used, again, whenever we broke this, form, this sum into two components, the left one, where we can use an assumption, plus the, the right one, the k plus 1, which is kind of a small one. Then, after small transformations, we came to this thing. So basically, we made all these three steps. OK, is that the end of it? Well, obviously not. We have to say something to, basic, to, to, to basically prove that the formula is true for any number. How can, from these three steps, we can derive that the formula is true for any number? Very simply. Formula is checked for n is equal to 1, right? We definitely know it's true. Then, here is the assumption. If formula is, um, is true for n equals k, then the formula is true for n is equal to k plus 1. Great. But we know that for k is equal to 1, formula is true. We checked it. All right? So first step is k equals to 1. And we use this transformation. If it's true for k, it's true for k plus 1. Which means if it's true for k equals 1, it's true for k equals to 2. k plus 1, right? Great. So we basically proved that the formula is true for, uh, for sum of two numbers. OK. Since it's true for 2, Again, using this transformation from k to k plus 1, where k is equal to 2, what follows is that the formula is true for k is equal to 3. And obviously, this process can be continued indefinitely. And for any number, any, any natural number, 100 million or whatever, using this logic, step by step, from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, from a million to a million and a half, we are actually making these logical assumptions, and therefore, it proves that it will be true for any number. Because for any number, we can repeat these steps whatever number of times we want, starting from 1 up to that particular number, and the whole thing will be proven. Again, what's very important is 
Number one, you checked it for some initial number, usually one. Then the formula can be assumed for a certain number. Let's assume it's true for k. Then, using this, we proved it that the formula is, um, uh, uh, is true for k plus 1. Right. Okay, so this is the methodology. And uh, what probably is, um, seems to be as a very important step is this step. Because we spent basically more, most of the time proving that if the formula is uh, true for m is equal to k, then the formula is true for k plus 1. Now, the fact that we have spent a little bit more time on this than checking that the formula is true for the beginning, for the initial number 1, doesn't mean that this is unimportant. Actually, if the first step is not made, then we cannot make the first and then all subsequent obviously steps in this logical um, uh, uh, step. So, it's very important to check that the formula is true for uh, for the initial uh, value of, of n, usually, usually it's 1. Now, if we don't do this, if we just make the proof that if some formula is true for n is equal to k, then it's, it, it will be true for n equals k plus 1. If we just make this logical step, it doesn't prove anything without this checking. As a matter of fact, you can prove a lot of absolutely wrong formulas uh, using this methodology. And uh, again, since it's not checked for the beginning, for the n is equal to 1, then this logical transformation from, from assumption to the proof doesn't really mean anything at all, because you can't use it. Here is an example. Um, let me just make a little bit more space. What I would like to um, explain right now is that this transformation from step 2 to step 3, from assumption that the formula is true for n is equal to 1 to prove that it's equal to n plus 1, um, is not sufficient. Here is my formula. n equals n plus 1. For any n. Obviously the wrong formula. All right, but let's try to uh, prove it using the method of mathematical induction. induction. And uh, what's very important, again, the number one step, check that the formula is true for some initial number, let's say for n is equal to 1. Let's say we do not do this. Obviously, if you put 1, it will be 1 is equal to 2. It's definitely wrong. So the whole method of mathematical induction is not fully implemented. However, step two, assume that k is equal to k plus 1 for some k. Now, proof for k plus 1. All right. Let's n to be k plus 1. On the left we will have um, k using assumption we will substitute it to this we will see that k plus 1 using this assumption plus 1 which is equal to k plus 2 which is exactly our formula for k is equal to k plus 1. k plus 1, k plus 2. That's exactly what we have proved. k plus 1, k plus 2. So using this assumption, we have proved basically the transformation from k to k plus 1. So obviously, using that, just these two steps, assumption for n is equal to k and proving that the formula is, uh, is also valid for n, n is equal to k plus 1, this works. But again, without the checking, it's absolutely worthless. We can't really say anything because the logical transformation is based on steps from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, etc. So the initial step, like 1 for instance in this case, is extremely important. 
Well, basically that concludes explanation of what is methods of mathematical induction is. And uh, there are a few problems which uh, I have also put on, uh, uh, on this page and uh, you definitely are invited to click on this and uh, uh, try to solve them yourself and if not, just look at my explanation of what these uh, particular um, problems uh, are about and how to solve them. Thank you.